So here's what we're going to do just for tonight. In two, in two weeks, or I guess it's not two weeks, we actually have uh, three weeks between now and our next meeting. What we will do is actually vote. I'll actually have this in a resolution to just to adopt mission, vision, and values, and probably some goals and objectives as we move forward. And so I'm going to kind of clarify some things that were not in the document so that they're kind of where we're at because I appreciate the work that went on last Tuesday night. I also do not want those that could not be in attendance not to have some input on at least uh, what the uh, overall goals and objectives were that we kind of discussed. But first of all, I, I greatly enjoyed, I don't know if you could tell because I was enjoying this, this, this opportunity watching the, the, the council and the staff engage in that discussion. I think that's extremely important for the community as we move forward and to be, you know, kind of collaborate on what we need to do. But one thing about it is tonight I want to go through kind of the results real quickly. And does everyone, even in the audience, have a copy of these results? And I may need to pass them all out. Maybe I didn't get them all out to everybody. I apologize if this is not in front of you. Did you get that one? Did you get that one? I don't recall that one. Yes, I did. Okay. We, we had this out so what, what we got here, this is the email I sent out. Uh, if you didn't get the email, then it's sitting in front of you. Basically, this is the... Uh, right here, the 2017 Goals and Objectives. Uh, this slide, the Growth and Planning, Process Improvement, Fiscal Responsibility, Stability, Technology, Personnel. And so... Uh, Councilman Smith and Jones, what we have is we got a score sheet for you as well that uh, we'll provide. And what it would be, uh, Lisa's getting that for you right now. And so basically what we want is this is what the results from the other night. Uh, with one, obviously, when you was ranking it from highest to lowest, and all of them we believe were to be, you know, if you agree from that, or from that discussion, everyone believed that those were some level of priority in the city. We could have changed these headings to be a number of different things and so we did not receive any feedback as to changing any of the headings or adding a different one, if I'm if I'm correct. But you have in front of you the uh, the results of what the priority were from a council perspective. I think there, even from the staff perspective there were 16 total responses and uh, and again before though we actually kind of put the final numbers to it, I'd still like to hear from uh, two councilmen that were unable to attend um, and to get their input is just to, to, you know, what that is and if there's any questions related to uh, to that. But as you can see from the response, the uh, fiscal responsibility and stability uh, was the highest rank and you can go through their personnel, community trust and satisfaction, process improvement, communications, growth and planning, technology and city beautification. Just to be clear about what it is. Huh, sorry? You don't have a copy of this? So again, just to be clear, this is not in any way specified that they go in that particular order. If I, one thing about it is that I did not participate in this in this ranking. Uh, I did not give it out there. I may have fed to people on the inside what I would have told you what would be the top two. If I was to put this in order from my own personal perspective, I would say that fiscal responsibility and personnel are that are, are probably those one and two, just because the personnel are the ones that are going to drive you to. They're the ones that are going to help you and assist you in getting to to fiscal stability. So they're kind of hand in hand. The one that I that was interesting to me though was the communication and and. Uh, our community trust and satisfaction, because I think the one area is how you build trust in the community is through communication, and how do we improve on the communication of the city. So, what it helps is it kind of they they still align pretty close together, but it was it's not real far off of what I thought. The city beautification one I really would have thought would have been higher. It was just it's interesting to see the results because I actually thought there would be people that's like you know like I want that to be one of the bigger priorities, even a little bit different. So anyway, that's kind of how the the, uh, 
the results came out. And then I also appreciate the feedback. This is the 2017 goals by department. Um, and you can see what we did with this is we basically ranked them from one somewhat or not important to somewhat important, three neutral. Uh, I don't think I saw anything in here that got a one, but what we just did is compiled the responses from everyone. And this again would, would give the opportunity to the two council members that were, were not present to participate, to at least participate and at least put your scores down in there. One caveat that I did not throw out there into that night is to just to, to skew the process of the uh, overall growth and planning. There is another set of administrator goals and objectives that talk about more of the regional approach, uh, more about what the kind of outlines my agenda of things that we're going to work on, at least from the administrator's office for the year. I did not want that to skew this particular process. I just did not bring that up in the discussion. I apologize for that. So you're going to get about about a three-page 2017 and 18 kind of goals and objectives for the for my overall office in general that we'll go through as a group collectively together to make sure which ones that you understand are going on uh, that we'll discuss either as part of the review or as part of just overall discussion. But uh, I appreciate the input into uh, the overall goals and objectives for 2017 and just moving on. As we move forward into those goals and objectives in the years coming forward, you'll see more and more information that will talk about deadlines, or actually talk about measurable goals, it'll talk about how we measure, whether or not we achieved it, timelines for getting that stuff done, but really to, really to start the initial dialogue with the community and the council, this was one of the, just at least to kind of start this whole process because it's my understanding it had not been done for a while. And so I hope you found the engagement to be uh, as intriguing as I did. Uh, I just thought it was, it was fun to watch. I actually caught a little video of it. Uh, and I will get your pro permission to share it, you know, on Facebook Live sometime. Just kidding. So it was all good. So I want to go back, though, real quickly over the discussion that we had for those that were unable to attend. And uh, I'm not going to go reading through this word for word, but I also we did not we did not settle on the vision statement. And if there was any changes, I had, I did not receive any other email or feedback as to changes to the vision statement, which doesn't mean okay. So did you just not take our our, our comments and even use them or apply them? It's just there was no definitive changes that were. Now, Brandon, you might have presented one. I'm sorry if we didn't get that one. We just. We may have file 13 or something, I'm not saying. <laughs> Get that on the video. So just so anyway, we stuck to, oh, we won't go through the ground rules. But we stuck to the, to the mission. Uh, we will aggressively be, will be aggressively progressive through processes, relationships, and trust. That was, uh, there was not much discussion. And I still, again, between now and the next meeting in February, this is the chance for us to discuss if there's anything you want to change. Because I'm going to draft this, or have I'm going to Ron's going to draft this into a resolution, at least for an adoption, and it's also going to be used as part of our marketing material as we're marketing for new employees, and also as we go out into the region, and we're kind of communicating what's going on in Republic. It's a new day, it's a new mission, it's a new vision, and new values. And so, um, but what I would like to discuss is if there was any changes, or if anyone brought anything tonight regarding. Not the ground rules again. <clears throat> Any question on the mission? Clarity. I, I have a comment about the mission. <laughs> sure, go ahead. <clears throat> and it, it's actually one that was pointed out to, to me from someone else who knew it. The, the word progressive yes. has become a highly partisan word, whether you agree with it or not, or which side you, you stand on. It is a pretty partisan word and kind of lends itself to, to that in the statement. We, you know, it's funny. We had the same discussion in the staff meeting and in the, in the work session the other night. What I, and I'll be really careful how I say it, but it's progressive. Is, is we, we actually went to it. Originally, this was bold. We were stressing what this is. And in this particular statement, what we went back to was the actual, probably the B in Republic is the B decisive. And, be, and I think that we kind of outlined in those lettering what that means. It's not Bernie Sanders progressive. It's actually talking about we got to be at a sense of urgency. 
And I think aggressive gets us there. Um, but I think it's w what progressive actually means to us as a community. But I, I, I had the same. We had the same dialogue in the EMT meetings. I think it's clear, and I think what's important is that when we're out there communicating what that message is, what exactly that means. Because here's the thing, this is a moving document, it's a living document, it's something that we actually got to believe in and move it forward. I don't like to do just what we call this acts of futility where we have something where we go out there and say this has no value or no meaning. Because I think the staff would tell you, I know the, the regional side would tell you, that we are already aggressively pursuing all of these areas right now, regardless if we have adopted this or not. We've already been on this kind of go mode from the very beginning. But how that's worded, and if there's a change or there's a way you'd like to change it, what I would tell you is that we're going to be extremely aggressive, whether it's how we word it, we've got to get our processes, relationships, and our trust wire tight. But if, we, if you want to change it, I'm, I am... I'm not going to be offended by that because I think that's the one thing that uh, how we word it is important. And I don't want anybody to be offended, but like we also said at the same time, it's going to be very difficult to word it where everybody's going to like it. But it's, a, it's an interesting point because <laughs> we had the same one in our discussion. That's why we ch so staff are incorrect on that. Correct. We had it bold and we unbold. I think we had it bold and underlined. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's uh, short and to the point. I think it's easy enough to <clears throat> say, easy enough to remember. Okay. Uh, gee. This is where we got kind of just where the most dialogue probably took place was the grow together by always doing the right thing at the right time for the right reason. Was there any other additions? And I don't want to say just because I didn't receive it by email doesn't mean people did not stop and think about this and write this down anywhere else. Was there any other discussions with staff after the meeting about the comments made on the vision? Was there any more dialogue around that? I think we the dialogue that we had, I can speak for <coughs> what, when we were sitting there having this conversation is if you pull out the old mission, was trying to take a city government or a government in, its, in and of itself and encompassing all the services that you got public safety and different things, how to make it succinct as possible. Um, that's where we was at is what does that look like? And that was the kind of a conversation we was, that we had moving forward as to. But as for changing it, it wasn't like we didn't have any suggestions for changing it. EMT might, anyone? But again, it's not. If there's, if there's one last chance. Where once we change it, we can always change it a year from now. But I don't want to. I kind of want to get. It's the whole objective of this is when you got an employee that's out in the field, and they got to make a decision about what is, what, you know, what is expected of them and what decision they could make. They have something that's very simple to do. Am I doing the right thing for the right time for the right reason? And remember, the word that we chose in this particular word was always. It's a striving statement. We're not always going to do the right thing at the right time and for the right reason. But it's at least an objective that we're striving to do that. But I think it's extremely critical overall. Um, back one slide, and I want to get, and I, I did not hammer on this a lot, but I will say this, just from a, from a, just from a pure directional and leadership side, I think we all got to agree, and I think this is what sells and what's selling and what's going to move the city of Republic is, there is that scripture where there's no vision the people perish. It's important if you got no guide or no something, a guiding principle that's moving us in that direction. And I think that this is probably where I, right now I see it's the immediate, the right now. But doing the right thing, this is definitely the hardest, hardest thing to encompass for me because that's very difficult considering that rules and policies that we got to make. There's going to be, when you, if you've ever seen her, try to, try to do this. Try to go and change the trash service in the Republic and see, hey, are you doing the right thing at the right time for the right reason? You're going to hear of a whole lot of different opinions of what the right thing, the right time, the right reason is. Correct? And that's going to get, you know, so you're trying to do the right thing.
striving for it. You're, you're laughing, but that's what. <laughs> I think it's good that it's really close to a Martin Luther King quote, um, which is, it's always the right time to do the right thing. But I like it. It was good. Comments. Changes. Again, email it to me or to the staff and we can go from there. No? I'll add something. I, one thing I want to point out I think is important is that focusing on the right thing at the right time for the right reason for both the conversation. But the fact of the matter is the focus of that statement is to grow together. And so we're doing the right things in every aspect of our job, from the smallest to the biggest, and with the intent of growing together. And I think that's that should be maybe the vision focus. It is part of our our logo and it's part of what we our brand, uh, rather than focusing on the right thing, right time, right reason. That's important, but the most is to grow together. Uh, that's that's my look at it. So Jason, to your point, because I've thought about it a lot since we've had, you know, just that, that night, if, if you ask me, but it's not just about myself, I, I, don't, I don't want us to be, and I've said this to staff, I mean, we're real careful how I word this, I don't want us to be just a face in the crowd. I want us to set the, so to your point is, what is that standard? I want us to be the regional leader. I want us to be the template. I don't. I want when people look at our processes, our relationships, and our trust, or how we go about it, they're saying, you know, I want us to be, I want us to set the, the mark. I don't want to necessarily be following anything. So when I talk to staff, I don't want to go and say, hey, what's, what's this city doing? What's that city doing? I want it to be, when they're looking at it, they're going, what in the world did Republic do, and how do we, how do we, met, how do we emulate that? Well, I, I, to Chief's point, I, I thought about this over the weekend, and really to grow or to be that regional leader, we have to be a community united. And we do a lot of things, I think, better than a lot of our surrounding municipalities, just from the things I've learned. Um, so I really do think that's appropriate, and to grow the right way, not just grow. And I think that's a good outline of how we can get there, um, with giving people enough room to kind of interpret that a little bit different or maybe in a way that works for them. Right. So I, I, I kind of looked at it a little differently over the weekend. Any other comments? Staff? Ron? <coughs> the values. I, again, I thought these were, uh, I thought, Gary, you did a great job of explaining uh, the values. Was there any changes that you saw to that? And granted, if, if you're reading this from the back, there's no way you're going to be able to see that, these comments about all the headings that went underneath this. And again, when we go out to the community uh, and even to the staff and different things, the same message that we provided the other night is the same message that we're going to provide what does Republic mean? What does that mean? And um, so, is there any changes to that wording? We did not receive. I mean, there, let, me, let me say this: just because we didn't receive feedback, does not mean there was not extensive dialogue that was taking place. And so, I appreciate the uh, the feedback and just the conversation that we had regarding those topics. Excuse me, the other night. Any questions? I did have a. This is published. I don't know where it was published on our Facebook or our website or whatever. But I did get a comment from um, somebody from outside of Missouri, outside of the public area, that said that they'd seen this, the mission, that the, this statement right there, and they said they really liked that. So it, it was, they were very impressed with it. Said it's said we've never seen the municipality do that before. So once we finalize the document, whatever the document. Things. I mean, we will go on an aggressive marketing exercise and campaign to put it out there. We have not yet. I don't, I don't know where that. I, I don't know where you got it either. Right. Was it? I mean, was that? It may have been just out of the newsletter or something. Because I know in the citizens' newsletter we kind of hit on this a little bit. Well, we try to stay. I mean, 
naturally wherever myself, if, if we're speaking or engage, engaging or having different conversations, we're talking about creating a new vision mm -hmm. and direction for the community. I mean, a whole new, we're not changing the logo, but we are, it's kind of like marketing and branding. It's just saying it's a new day. And so there is a lot of discussion regarding the mission, vision, and values, but I wouldn't necessarily say, we, I've seen three or four different templates of this that we've had with different backdrops, and we've had the aquatic center in there, and we've had... Well, I think this is just as important for the community, or just as important for the community as it is for um, the employees of the city. And I'm anxious to see how you will market this and ingrain that into the, you know, the employee base, because I think that, I mean, <clears throat> These are fantastic, and you did, a, you know, I see a great job, uh, you know, explaining it and going through it. So, I just think both of those are really important. Well, the key is moving forward, and this is just something that we did not discuss. But once you solidify, it, this becomes part of the performance review. Is once you start seeing these things exercised in the employee, you can act, outline in these expectations, and specifically, there's going to be those that are that are necessarily, you know. The guy that's uh, working at the wastewater plant, and I can say this because that's where I started, I'm not going to worry about the region. I mean, how, how do I apply regional to what it is that I that I do? But to be professional, to be ethical, especially when it's coming to the water supply and different things, how does this apply to them? I'm going to leave it up to the department head when they go to establish their own mission, vision, and values, how to make this, you know, from a regional perspective, to partner with other regions or other wastewater plants and different things. How that how that applies to them, but it's um, it's going to be exciting to get the message out. But then it's going to be even more interesting to see how this branches out to each department. But even in that, their performance review should be based upon what the expectations are of the leadership of the city. Does that, does that make sense? Any questions? Or better yet, when we talk about one of the things we changed in the, the, the latest admin policy, where we talk about performance rewards. When you see these things that say someone's done something of these of these natures, you can at least drive it that that's one of the core things that we look for in our leadership to to reward the employee and to recognize it whenever we see that type of behavior. So, we're good. It's quiet. I like it when. Well, we did a lot of talking. Yeah, when we first, I mean, you guys did a real good job. It looks real good. I will say this, what's exciting, what's exciting is when you go to the development community or to develop, to, to the business community that's looking currently at Republic and they hear of this, they're excited because people are buying into vision, they're buying into leadership, they're buying into a direction. They want to know they're going to get a return on their investment when they put their money into our community and that it's going to be safe and that they're going to see a return on that. I know there's a lot of excitement and anticipation regarding at least, I mean, going out with it. You know, we've talked to the <coughs> Springfield Chamber, um, even our own chamber. Just, I'm looking forward to putting this out there and branding this to some way. What will be next is how do you brand it and how do you get a marketing and communication plan to aggressively go after it. So. So, really, is there any other discussion or topics that I need to go over regarding that particular issue? Like I said, there is going to be one more, um, I have one more document that will go out that I'll discuss with the council just in general. It's not going to be a secret. I'll provide it to the staff as well. It kind of outlines some of the things that, uh, that, bre that breaks this all down based upon this information that breaks it down even more so. It talks about, for example, um, process improvement, um, one-stop shopping in the planning and zoning department, or whenever a developer comes in, some of the expectations that, that we need to shore up the things that we're going to need as a community as we grow together, uh, master water plans, master sewer plans, the master street plan, comprehensive plan, the planning, the land use plan. There's a lot of things that right now need to get updated and quickly. And so there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to be brought to you. Like you, you've, you've already done it in the first six months that I've been here. We've changed a lot of, a lot of policy and drafted a lot of things that will help move it forward. But there's going to be a whole lot more that I foresee that you're going to be voting on in 2017 that we're going to be asking to move fairly 
quickly. And that doesn't mean that we're going to do it where, again, we don't have a workshop and you're going to say we're just going to get it thrown in front of us and you're just going to say vote on it. I hope you'll see through the work sessions that this is part of the communication process is to get you <coughs> more informed as to what is being presented. But um, is there any group, well, let me ask you this, is there any group, and I'll ask this to everybody, is there other groups that we need to engage in addition to this before that you would like for us to stay on and discuss? I mean, it's going to be difficult to go to staff, but like planning and zoning, we've talked about going to the Planning and Zoning Commission, the Capital Improvements Committee, and different people of that nature, at least to, to, to demonstrate. Is there anyone else? Because what I hope to do is when we're done is to take it to the chambers and different groups as well. Should we have like a financial group possibly to help assist? Yeah. Well, I think the idea, and I'm, I'm hoping, and I, I, again, I apologize. I wish I'd at least gave that caveat that night. Is there's another list of things like I want to create committees that will help us address IT. I want to address our financial st strength and stability and the current financial position, especially the debt structure. How are we going to how are we going to attack what has obviously been listed as the number one thing? What do I want? To, what are you going to see me do immediately in 2017? I want to create a finance committee team that basically looks at the financial stability of the city and create an action plan for 2017 and 18 to address our debt structure. Because it's kind of like we had a great meeting on the budget. We found out we had the, the, some debt that was long outstanding. We were like, what are we going to do? Are there refinancing options? That's not the time necessarily to address it, but it is a time to say, hey, listen, what are going to be the action plans to address ways to, to, to get that done? I have one suggestion. Sure. <clears throat> um, when you go to sell this to the community or you go out in the community, this is great, but it might also be worth your while to pull together some of the, the actions that you've taken since. Sure. So that there's kind of some proof there. And I'll give you an example, the Heart of America deal where the performance bond was involved, um, Village Pottery and how you worked with them to make sure they could continue business. And some of the things that we've done that were different um, that kind of support this model, Excellent. just so that people understand that we're already moving. I think it's important. Yeah, and I think that's a, and I, and I hate to, I, I love that idea, and, and yes, because I got to speak to a group today, and that question, very question was asked me, so what has changed? Well, I can say this, there's no longer a fine if you build a fence in the public without a permit, or at least there's some, there's some latitude, but yeah, the setback changes that we made. But the Heart of America project, I can't even explain to you how the latitude and how where, where that project was at six months ago and where it's at today and how many other doors it's opened because we actually demonstrated. We also cost shared on their intersection improvements. But, you know, some of the calls I got today are out of the result of our collaboration with Heart of America that we would have, that's just word of mouth that's getting out as to that we're, we're open for business to partner to get things done rather than maybe some other processes that were in place. But there is one that's coming up that's fairly large at the next council meeting that um, I guess there, I guess I can talk, I mean, if it's not something that was on the agenda, they're going to vote on it in two weeks, I can bring it up. Yeah, yeah, so, so we got 25 minutes, I'm going to take about 10 to explain to a project that uh, is called um, the Garden Center Business, is it called Garden Center Business Park? And so we met with uh, leaders in Springfield last week, I believe it was, and uh, kind of just talked about how to partner on another project that would uh, bring development to uh, to ROI in that area out there. And so at the next council meeting, you're going to see us put together a uh, kind of a cost share street construction slash they sell property, we get paid back in return. But it's going to be another collaboration of where we're partnering to try to help spur economic development in the Brooklyn Consolidation Area. And that'll be on the next agenda. And so what that is, if you see where ROI is at right now, and I don't have a drawing of it, and so you all, I have a drawing of it, I just don't have it up here for this presentation. <coughs> where ROI is at right now, you got McLean, then you got ROI's building. There is no street that divides that property. And so basically through a partnership between Jury University that owns the property, um, and some concessions and some discussions that have been taking place over the last several months, um, They've agreed to pay for some of the engineering if we would partner or consider partnering on a street. And when the lot sells, uh, which may already be a prospective buyer, uh, that we would be made whole on the cost of the project. And so it's kind of a win-win to help move what comes first, the chicken or the egg. You kind of just wait for uh, development to happen or do you go out there and become an active participant. And we become an active participant 
in doing that. And so the regions already see, from a regional perspective, they're already seeing this in action to some extent. I think that next step, next Monday night, will help only solidify that. So, um, but there's still a lot of room for questions and discussions. That's not a done deal, but it's um, it's definitely a lot of discussion that I want to bring you in the in the loop on publicly. So there's no, what are you doing behind the scenes? We talked a lot to different developers about what we could potentially do. Now it's time to kind of go out and start talking about what it should look like if we go forward with it. But anybody know what I'm, everybody know what I'm talking about? So, um, but yes, yeah, so when we go out, we need to demonstrate what we're doing. I think it's an opportunity to change perceptions rapidly. Hope so, because we need to. So, um, you said you want uh, the groups to present this to. Prior to roll out, you might try the capital improvements committee. We're going to meet on the 25th. And I think it'd be something good for them to see. Um, and I don't know. On the initial rollout, you probably don't want to get the schools involved or the county involved. But do uh, you think? Do you think we should get the, you know, give schools a heads up? Let them show show them what we're doing. Sure, I think Chance has seen it. Okay. Uh, but I do think the school board would be another place that we yeah. would go. Um, um, yeah, I think any place that we can get a we can get a forum that we can talk about it is. It's critical, but I think what people want to see is this in action. Mm -hmm. And so, and what that exactly means, because I believe it will also in the future, once that's adopted, will drive what the goals and objectives are going to be. Because not necessarily these goals and objectives are reflective of that document. It's hard to put, when that, until that's approved, it's hard to really reflect that into these, these goals and objectives. And so, I mean, because there's, there's certain things in here about, um, equipment upgrades and different things of that nature. What I'm going to look for as we move forward from that will be specifically driven down to processes, relationships, and, and trust. <coughs> and I think this document helps to establish trust because it, because it brings clarity to the investor or even to the community what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing a lot of talking. Anything else? Anything? Any comment? Concerns? I appreciate the input. When whenever we get uh, your scorecards or your information back, we'll incorporate that into the overall numbers. It does not drive. I'll say it's not going to drive. I will say. Oh, let me rephrase. Yes, we're not going to take off and start working on beautification projects whenever we need to worry about how to become financially more stable in light of the last, in light of our budget discussion. Naturally, 2017, I think our budget's going to be a priority, working on how to build more cash and cut more costs. So, anyway, 20 minutes until then. There's food in the back. Yeah, if, you have, if you have any you. questions, um, uh, direct those to David Cameron. Um, Council, I would direct you or would uh, recommend you read this, read through this again and again and again because. We're we'll, we'll going to be being asked about this when it rolls out. So, council will be on board with the two. Just like staff will be on board. So, I would uh, ask that you all do that, please. Don't just put it in your back books and, and forget about it. So, please, please peruse it, look over it. If you do have any questions or changes you'd like to see made, get with Mr. Camp. Thank you. And with that, we will adjourn the City Council Special Workshop. And you will get some of the <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.